All right, next up we've got pie and donut charts. I'm sure you already know what a pie chart is. One of the most basic chart types out there. It's really just used to compare proportions totaling 100%. But if you don't know much about donut charts, you'll probably want to pay attention because donut charts aren't just pie charts with the center cut out, which is how they got their name, but they also introduce some capabilities that go well beyond what a pie chart can do. So for instance, you can add multiple rings to a donut chart like this to show additional data series or metrics within the same visualization. You can also get clever and build some sort of a racetrack or pacing style visualization like this, which I'll show you in just a minute. So examples of when you'd use either a pie or a donut chart, anything that adds up to uh, a percentage of a whole. So percentage of budget by department, internet users by age range, a breakdown of site traffic by source, uh, you get the idea. So pro tips here, first off, just like areas and, and clustered or stacked columns, keep the number of slices or, or data series small and recommend fewer than six, again, uh, just to maximize readability. And second, like I mentioned, that donut chart is a really cool way to either visualize more than one series at once or to create custom racetrack style uh, pacing visualizations. All right, so head on over to Excel. Go ahead and click on the pie and donut chart tab. Here we've got a small, pretty basic data set. Uh, we're looking at category level cost and revenue for apparel, electronics, toys and games, and housewares. We also have some additional fields here. Uh, revenue gap, revenue target, and percent to target. Uh, these are the fields that we'll be using uh, to create that custom racetrack visualization that I hinted at earlier. So why don't we start simple and just include a basic pie chart showing the distribution of cost by category. So I can select A1 through B5, insert a basic 2D pie, and there you have it. With most pie charts, I like to add some data labels and rather than show the value, I prefer to show a percentage. Um, then you can position those however you choose. I'm going to make them bold and just increase the size a bit. Um, so obviously nothing to write home about, but uh, the pie chart is doing its job. It's showing which categories drove the largest share of spend. So in this case, apparel drove 38%, electronics 27 and so on and so forth. So if I go ahead and copy this entire chart and duplicate it, I'll show you what a donut chart looks like. So I can just change the chart type, go to this fifth option, which is donut. And as is, all it does is just remove the center hole and make it look like a donut, uh, which you might think is kind of silly and could certainly just be an option with a pie chart. Uh, but it actually did much more than that. What it allowed me to do now is select my data and add a new series. So we're going to add a series called revenue with the values from C2 through C5. And when I do that, as you can see, now it's created a second ring with the same category level data, just showing a second metric. So if I tried to do that with my pie chart, same exact approach, add a series called revenue with C2 through C5 it doesn't know what to do. It, it doesn't do anything, in fact. Um, so that's one huge benefit of using a donut chart. Now the only catch using donuts like this is that the, the legend won't really tell the user what the difference is between the inner ring and the outer ring. Uh, so we might have to get a little bit clever. One option is to edit your data labels and instead of a percentage, show the actual series name. Um, so that way this is telling me, okay, this inner ring is showing cost. I can do the same thing, add data labels to my outer ring, and I can format those to show series name as well. Don't need value, don't need leader lines. I can make those bold and a little bit bigger just to make them consistent. Uh, obviously, there's a lot going on here. One kind of customization I can make is to format the data series and just shrink down the whole size uh, of the donut a bit just to give a bit more room for our labels and I actually don't need all of these labels I can go in and just pinpoint and delete three out of the four because uh, really obviously they're they're all telling me the same thing uh, so if I just leave one that will help tell the user okay I'm looking at uh, cost in my inner ring revenue in my outer ring 
you know, if you want to take it one step further, um, I'm just trying to resize this to make it a bit more readable. Uh, if you want to take it one step further and you want to show that this blue segment is associated with the same blue segment in the outer ring, but that we're looking at two different things, you can change your fill options. And what you can do is choose the same color blue, but maybe with a little bit of a transparency. Um, do the same thing with these other colors just to show you uh, kind of what I'm getting at. So I'm going to choose the same orange here with some transparency. I'm going to choose the same gray with some transparency. And last but not least, uh, some yellow. So that's just kind of one way to, to stylize things a little bit and show the user, OK, we're looking at uh, the same category but two different metrics. Um, so that's, that's a donut chart. Next up, I'm going to show you the uh, Fancy Pants racetrack chart, uh, which uses a donut, but it's a little bit of a hack. So I'm going to go through this quickly. Um, try to bear with me. So what I need to do here is use this new data that includes the revenue gap and the revenue target as well. So I'm going to select my source data, which comes from column A, and then control click, column C, D, and E. That's my source for my racetrack. So I'm going to insert a donut using that as my source. And the first thing I need to do is just get rid of the chart title. And I'm not going to need a legend in this case, believe it or not. Um, and finally, I'll choose the format data series, just reduce that donut hole size um, so that it's a little bit more uh, easy to work with. So now what I'm looking at here, as I select these rings, you can see exactly what it's referring to. Each ring represents a different metric where each segment of the ring is a category. This actually is not what I want. What I would like is for each ring to represent a category and each segment to represent one of the metrics. So I want one segment of the ring to represent revenue, and the next segment represent the revenue gap, and the final segment to represent the revenue target. So to do that, all I need to do is just switch my rows and columns. And now if I select the outer ring, you can see it's a horizontal source array. The outer ring is housewares, where each segment is revenue, revenue gap, and revenue target. So we're getting closer. Uh, the next step that we need to do is just eliminate these gray pieces, because really they're only there as placeholders to calculate 50% of the full circle. So I can go into my fill options and just select no fill. And that essentially just makes, oops, Make sure you only have the gray piece selected. Essentially, just makes it invisible. And there you go. So we're getting even closer. But the catch now is that each ring has the same exact color palette. So it's impossible to tell uh, which category they're associated with. So what I'm going to do is use the same palette that was determined by my pie chart just for consistency here. So this outer ring is housewares, which was the yellow slice. So I'm going to drill down into this blue piece, and I'm just going to fill them myself. And so the first piece is actual revenue driven by housewares. The second segment is the revenue gap. So it's still associated with housewares. So I'll do the yellow fill. But just like before, I'm going to give it 50% transparency. And now we'll go through the same process. Toys and games is my gray column. So I want this slice to be gray, and the Toys and Games gap to be gray with a 50% shade. And then here we go for electronics, which is my orange slice. So I'm going to give it a solid orange. And this little bit is going to be solid orange with 50%. And then last but not least, we've got apparel, which is blue, so that slice is OK. Just going to fill that last little piece with blue and 50%. And there you go. So now we're getting really, really close. This is actually showing how much each category is pacing. The problem is that because we kind of hacked this thing together, we can't use the default labels uh, in the way that they're designed to be used. But that's not a problem. We can just insert a text box. I'm going to do this over here so I stay away from the chart. I'm just going to type in each of these categories. So housewares, toys and games, 
electronics, and apparel. And I'll just select them all, make them bold. We'll do a right align here. And last but not least, I'm going to format the shape. And I don't want to fill it, and I don't want a line. And this is kind of like my manual little version of custom labels. So I can increase the size a little bit just to make it align and overlay it right on top of my chart. And there you have it. It's kind of the, uh, <laughs> the roundabout way of adding your own chart labels. And now last but not least, if you want to get some next level uh, customization in here, you could insert another text box. And instead of typing in a value in the formula bar, you can just say, I want this text box to equal the value in cell F2. So I want this to be my apparel percent to target. When you hit enter, it populates it with the value. You can then format that value just like you would otherwise. You can make it bold. You can increase the size. You can drag it over. This one's apparel, so I put it right here. Let's just do the same formatting rules. No fill, no line. Um, and you could repeat the process for the other four, but essentially what this does is now if the apparel revenue target changed from 190,000, for instance, to 130,000, the segment of the racetrack changed as well as the percentage. So let's see that one more time. Let's say that the target is actually way higher. It's 250,000. Now all of a sudden we're only 47%. Uh, if it was 400,000, we're only 30%. Um, so it's just obviously a lot of work. It's, it's pretty manual, a little bit tedious. But it's a really interesting way to use a pretty basic chart type in Excel uh, to create something totally custom. Uh, so there you go. That's using pie charts and donuts to show percentages in Excel.